a big part of what happens in batteries right now, especially as we go into silica anodes or solid state electrolytes. You know, we pretty much have run the gamut on every type of battery chemistry at this point, but this one's a fun example that shows a few different things. So we're gonna be doing uh, both elemental mapping here and depth profiling. What happens on the surface of this anode versus as we go deeper into it. And we're gonna be looking at what happens with when it's perfectly fresh, hasn't been charged or discharged, and what hap what's the difference between charging it really slow and really fast? And can the mass box see the difference here? And so again, just getting you to think about how you can use this technology. So on the left here, we have a pristine anode. This is a silicon anode. This is kind of one of the sexiest materials in the battery space right now, and really where a lot of work is being done to commercialize this. So again, we're trying to accelerate this commercialization to help people understand how to use this. So we have a 2C cycle anode, and if you're not familiar, basically that's 1C would be a normal charge rate. So 2C would be very accelerated charging, which is obviously what we want to do. We want our cell phones to charge faster. We want our cars to charge faster. And 0.05C would be a very slow charge rate. So the hypothesis being, if I change the charge rate, do I change what's happening in the chemistry, which is ultimately leading to shorter lifespans of failure mechanisms? And normally this is uh, found to be in the place of like lithium plating or lithium dendrites in some communities where you have lithium plating out, ultimately short circuiting the battery, battery fails, and we don't want that. So how do we stop lithium plating and where can we see it and how can we see it? And how is the electrolyte decomposing? So on the pristine anode, so again, same uh, scale that we've shown before, X and blue, very high, black, very low. Uh, we're showing maps of lithium here. Um, we'll talk about this in a second, but very homogeneous distribution of lithium that actually shouldn't have been there to begin with. So they had a whole other process control issue of actually having lithium when they weren't supposed to have lithium, uh, but it was homogeneous in the pristine. And then we're gonna look at the 2C and 0.05C. And what we see are these hot spots here. And on the 2C, so the very fast cycled one, and we found this again and again, you see much larger nucleation sites for these lithium plating. And actually we found in there lithium carbides and lithium hydrates as well. So electrolyte decomposition, which I'll, I'll go into. But the main difference I want you to see is that in the 0 0.05, you see these small little areas, little pinpricks of just the beginning of this lithium plating out. And in the very fast charge, we found much larger nucleation sites. So it was very a much an accelerated process, which is again, in line with what the research is expected. But what you'll see in a second here is that if we were to look at this on average, they might not look that different, which is deceiving, which is why you have to look at it in space. Because this 2C, this battery is pretty much failed or on its way to failure. And the 0.05C isn't there yet. And it's because of these morphological differences on this scale. So for scale, every spot size here is 50 microns. So if we wanted to zoom in on these and maybe do a little higher resolution, look at it on a 30 micron scale, we're looking at something like this. So every spot size here is now 30 microns. And we are able to see that like the average size is maybe 100 microns or so for these particles in the very slow 0.05C charge rate anode. And we don't see much of a hole in the, the silicon. Uh, we haven't gotten a full removal of the silicon there and fully plated all the way through to cause a short circuit. But another interesting thing is that we're actually seeing a lithium carbide and a lithium hydrate as well, which comes from electrolyte decomposition, which is something that researchers really wanna know about, which is very difficult to measure by other techniques and impossible to measure in place. We're the only technology that can really do this well and do this fast. And if we look by contrast to, again, a zoomed in set of that 2C, we see that now we're talking multiple hundreds of micron particle size, and we see big holes in the silicon maps across every species of silica there. And this is what's causing a short circuit. Now, I want you to hold that in your head of, okay, we had not much silica loss in the 0.05C, big silica loss, much larger lithium plating in this, but 
let's just average that whole raster. If we were to look at it on average, uh, let's look at this as a bar graph. So I, I integrated that whole map and I'm looking at silica and lithium. And then I went down in multiple layers here. So layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. These are four rasters of the exact same size. So um, yeah, you can see the legend there of what layer is what. It goes one, two, three, four from left to right. This is just average raw signal intensity. What you can see is on the pristine uh, anode, we have higher silica actually in the um, in the first layers, and then it's relatively homogeneous going down through. And as we start that cycle, we actually start to lose some of that silica in the first layer, presumably because it's being displaced after charging. So we're looking at that interface there. And this is what I alluded to earlier. If we look over on the lithium maps, we are seeing a huge spike in lithium in the pristine sample, which should have very low lithium. So this was the first red flag for them as a process control of, hey, lithium's not where it should be. We have an issue that we need to also ad address. But I want to then point your eyes over to the 0.05C and the 2C. If you look at these graphs, as we go in depth with lithium, they more or less follow the same trend. They look kind of the same on average. And if we look at the hydrates and carbide that I talked about, you can see in the pristine sample, there's almost none of these compounds, right? There was perfect, just lithium, no hydrates, no, no carbides, no other weird species. There was just a little bit more lithium that should have been there. So there's a different scale here shown on the inset for the hydrate, for example. So orders of magnitude lower, this didn't happen. So all of these compounds that are forming are happening during the charging process. And again, if we look at the two cycle difference, you might miss, you might say, wow, look at that, our 2C performed just as well as our 0.05C. Yeah, we're forming these compounds, but these look the same. But if we think back to those maps, there's actually a very big morphological difference. So average can sometimes lie to you. You need to look at it in context. And we do this across a lot of our application spaces. So whether it's the additive manufacturing powder, looking for statistical inclusions of contaminants, what's acceptable, what's not, we're here in the battery space. How big are those dendrites? How deep are those dendrites or plating that's happening? And what's the species of them? Looking at the map and it, looking at them in the map is more useful sometimes than just looking at it in the average. And the average is obviously very useful as well. And then the obviously the other takeaway here is that we can look at this in depth and we can see that there's a big boost in these compounds on the surface which is what we would expect. That's where the interface is. Um, that's where the chemistry is going to start and it's going to penetrate down. And again, with this depth profiling, we can correlate this with, um, with an actual depth of material removed. So what we did here is we basically just drilled down into a spot. This had a copper backing. And as soon as we hit the majority of the copper, we knew that we had basically gone through the anode and therefore, we can calculate, okay, per laser shot, this is how much material removed. So we removed 22 microns. And now we can actually go back and say each of those uh, depths was, you know, a uh, few hundred nanometers. So that we knew exactly, okay, the layer that I'm dealing with, my issue layer is a few hundred nanometers thick. And that could really help you with what process you need to fix as well. And you can see this really clearly in the time series of let's say this lithium hydrate that we were looking at. You can see in the pristine sample, there's none of this. There's no spike up at the beginning, but in both of the charge samples, we see this really big spike at the beginning formation of these compounds. And as you go deeper and deeper into the battery, you don't see it as much. And the faster charge, the orange one is obviously higher and it lingers longer, meaning it has deeper penetration into the battery.